with great honor and privilege, I introduce to you Alex and Crystal Chippy. Please come. ugly cry at any point. <laughs> when I was preparing um, my testimony for this evening, I was kind of struggling, to be honest. Um, but something that the Lord kept bringing to me multiple times over the last week or so is what I'm about to uh, share with you. And the key word, the key word that just kept repeating itself over and over and over again is dependency. So then as I started reflecting over my life the last five or so years, God just opened my eyes. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was, sitting, I was sitting today trying to just pin some things down. And um, gosh, it just really hit me what God has been doing in my life in the last five years, and so that's what I want to share with you. In July of 2015, I moved to Zambia, Africa, and I married my best friend. I couldn't ask for a better husband. He's the biggest servant in our house, and that's the truth. And I'm so grateful for that. And I wouldn't be here today if it were not for Jesus Christ and my husband. Uh, soon after I got to Zambia, it's kind of a funny story now. It was not funny then. <laughs> I, uh, there's such a thing as, it's called load shedding. Okay, let me tell you about what load shedding is. Load shedding is uh, when they decide to literally take away electricity for sometimes several hours out of the day because the power company cannot support the entire country 24-7, 365 days a year. So it just happened to be that the year that I got there, uh, we were load shedding several times every single day, and it was at different hours. We weren't on a consistent schedule at that point. So I had taken my phone into the bathroom because I know y'all were going to wonder why was I taking my phone into the bathroom. But that's why, because we were load shedding. It was dark. I took my phone into the bathroom because it was my flashlight, okay? And I dropped it in the toilet. <laughs> I dropped it in the toilet. So it stopped working. It's, it stopped work. Same night, like, I, I fished it out of the toilet. I did. I, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. I fished that sucker out of the toilet. <laughs> and I tried to stick it in, like, some rice to dry it out. And uh, it was not to be recovered. <laughs> not at all. So why do I share that with you? Because it was one of my, I would have called it one of my lifelines because it was one of the only things I had to be able to con keep in contact with people over here. <sighs> now, I have since, we've since figured all of that out, but at the time, uh, it was either that or you go into town, into the internet cafe, and you, you know, you get on their, their computers and they're super slow, <laughs> you know, and I was able to get out a few things that way. God had to separate me, and 
And this is how I like to illustrate like the first year of my life in Zambia. If you've ever uh, bought a fish, you know that when you get that fish, you're not supposed to go and take it and put it directly into the fish tank, right? Because if you do, the fish can go into shock, it can die, end of story. So, <laughs> so how I like to explain that it, my first year is I was so very much like that fish, and I've, I felt isolated, and um, in some ways I felt very alone, and that's nothing against my husband whatsoever, because, oh my gosh, I couldn't have made it through. I cried so many times. Just pray for him, please. <laughs> I cried so many times that first year, um, but God saw us through, and uh God showed me where my dependency was. Before I uh, moved to Zambia, this was my church home. And uh, I still very much consider this, you know, my home. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like a, even though there are many new faces, this still feels like home to me. And uh, this is family to me. And... Uh, before I went to Zambia, I had uh, many close relationships, many couples who were like parents to me. Um, a lot of people who poured their lives into me. And God showed me that I was more dependent upon man than I was on him. That was a hard truth to learn. Because there's nothing like the body of Christ. But what do you do when you don't have an army around you? What do you do when you're standing on an island? You have to depend on God. In July of 2018, Brian Calloway approached my husband and I and uh, asked us to pray about uh, temporarily moving to Kafuafuta. Temporarily. Tem temporarily. Okay, that's what you said. <laughs> so we prayed about it and... Um, you know, I think we've shared a few few times that obviously we accepted. And we went to the mission, and, you know, the purpose was because Tammy needed to come back. And so I was to kind of take over and maintain the treasury while she was gone. So that was, um, that was how God moved us to the mission. You know, and obviously through our time there, you know, God showed my husband and myself that that is where we where to stay. So in September of 2019, the Callaways uh, came back here on furlough. And I had no idea we were about to begin one of the hardest journeys. Let me tell you guys, please pray for your missionaries. Please pray for your missionaries. You never know what they might be going through. And I obviously can't share everything with you, but I can tell you that there are some high waters to walk through. And there are some hard things. There was more than one time I wanted to say I'm done. I can't keep going. Let me tell you about this couple here. This couple means so much to us. God used them to shepherd us through the last year of our lives. And you want to talk about in samples. Look at Brian and Tammy Calloway. They were in samples to us. A lot of times they didn't know it. 
They didn't know, but they were. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Neither as being lords over our God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. We watched this couple. And even though they were, you know, thousands of miles away from us during their time on furlough, in many ways, it felt like they were right there with us. Walking with us and being laborers alongside us. Tammy, thank you for pouring into my life. (laughs) She shared a lot of things that, you know, that they were able to do while in Zambia, but I'm going to share with you how she poured into my life. I saw a woman who, who struggled, and in the face of struggles, she saw her God. A woman who was struggling herself, and she kicked me in the booty and said, you need to keep going, Crystal. (sighs) I will forever be grateful for our time that we were able to share physically there still at the mission. I learned a lot from you. Thank you. I love you. (laughs) I'm sorry. I told you I was going to ugly cry. (laughs) There's a verse, and maybe you've seen it already pass through. There is a verse that I clung to before going to Zambia. So much so that actually my sister Crystal, she made this beautiful wall hanging. She actually like did it like embroidery or how I don't know how she does what she does, but it was it's beautiful. And I took it with me and it's been hanging in our house as a constant reminder. Jeremiah 17, verse 8, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I had no idea when God gave me that verse over five years ago that he was about to walk me through it. He showed me where my dependency was. He showed me where my dependency needed to be. To be uncommon, you must be dependent. Not on self, not on man, but on God. We have to be dependent on him. For without him, we can do nothing. Thank you. Okay, thank you.